Hi guys. Gonna take you on a little trip down memory lane with this clip. Um, I started composing songs when I was a teenager in high school. And actually, musically, I began as a drummer. I was banging on cardboard boxes at our cottage when I was a young guy. And then when I entered my early teen years, I joined a drum corps band and learned to play drums properly. And then um, as an early teenager, my parents purchased me a drum kit. And so I never looked back after that. We've been banging on drums ever since. Um, I picked up the guitar uh, in early high school and immediately started to write songs. I loved the idea of composing songs and um, the songs in those days were mostly about uh, girlfriends or uh, girls that I'd like to befriend and the crazy stuff I did with all my uh, guys that I hung out with at the time. Um, later in my teen years, the songs got a little more mature and the themes kind of got a little more interesting. But in the early days, it was just a lot of fun stuff. I bought myself a uh, a quarter track reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder at the time, which was kind of cool because it allowed me to record uh, multiple instruments on the tape myself. So I'd um, record drums on the left channel, for example, to start, and then I could bounce the drums over to the right channel and add an additional instrument like bass or guitar or whatever. So I'd bounce instruments back and forth uh, until I got some semblance of uh, a band formed and then I'd sing the vocal to the song and that's how I did it kind of sitting cross-legged on the floor in my grandparents basement where I was living at the time um, recording all these songs now they've gone largely um, forgotten over the years because I, I didn't have a reel-to-reel -to, -reel to play them back on but recently on Kijiji I purchased uh, a quarter track machine and a professional 15 IPS Tascam deck so I could uh, replay all those tapes and see what I might find from the old days. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. Anyway, this is the archive behind me. Um, come on back and I'll show you uh, kind of what I'm talking about in terms of those old tapes. I should have probably between 60 and 120 tapes in here, 10 inch reels and these seven and a half inch reels. Um, yeah, look at these old tapes. Old songs from Hamilton, it says. Um, these would have been taped from as early as 1969 into the early 70s. Let the Captive Go, Six String Lover. Remember that one. Love, Flower Love Song. Don't remember that one. Um, and here's a compilation tape dubbed in 1974. So this would have been a compilation of a bunch of old tapes brought together. Going to be really interesting to listen to these. Okay, so um, the first thing that has to happen with these old tapes is that um, over time, tapes degenerate. They start to break down. And um, it's evident when you put them on a tape recorder, they start to squeak and uh, uh, some of the contents of the tape break up over time and they get all sticky and can stick to the, the tape heads. And if you play them without treating them properly in advance, um, they can be damaged irreparably and then you're really in trouble. So I'm going to bake these tapes. I'm going to show you what's involved in that. And then we're going to uh, do some listening together and see what we find. Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to be baking. Baking tapes. Reel-to-reel -reel tapes, to be exact. Dating back to the mid-70s. So why do we bake old tapes? The answer is that all tapes degrade as they get older, and tapes from the 70s are particularly vulnerable to something called sticky shed syndrome. What happens is the iron oxide, which is a key component of the tape, degenerates and begins to shed. It then sticks like glue to the playheads and tape guides on the reel-to-reel -reel machine. 130 to 140 degrees is the melting point for the tape's key components and the sweet spot to rebind the elements and make the tape playable again. So that's how you bake tapes. Four hours in the dehydrator at 130 degrees, and hopefully when it's done, we'll be able to put it on the reel-to-reel -reel deck and it'll play back without falling apart or sticking to the tape heads. Stand by. 
Okay, so we finished the baking process on about a dozen of those reel-to-reel -reel tapes from the 70s. And what I'm finding is uh, some of the tape has deteriorated such that the, uh, the leader tape at the head of some of these has just fallen off when I've, when I've picked it up and taken it out of the box. You can see this one here has just separated from the leader tape. So I'm going to have to re-splice that. Uh, we'll put that together and then we'll start to do some listening. Okay, so I purchased a, a reel of splicing tape, new splicing tape here that we're going to use. I'm going to peel enough off for a good leader here and then uh, cut it. Okay, so I trimmed that with a razor blade. I'm going to put that on now. And actually, I should have put my glasses on because my, my eyesight at this, uh, in this proximity isn't the greatest. But we're going to put that on there. Okay. Back in the day, I would have had uh, someone do this who actually knew what they were doing. But um, now, of course, it's left to little old me. So now with the repair done, we've got uh, a good length of leader here that we can uh, thread onto the reel-to-reel uh, the -reel machine. And I remember back in the early days of working with tape, um, how nervous I was <laughs> when we would be handling master recordings. We've done this uh, fantastic mix in the studio, and then it came time to splice the tape. So there was kind of a reverence for, for the guys, the engineers, I wasn't one of them, that could actually uh, do this properly. So we've got a nicely spliced tape on there. Uh, ready to play. Okay, so let's start capturing some of that reel-to-reel -reel audio. I'm working with a program called uh, Logic Pro, which is going to capture the audio digitally. And uh, we're all set to go here. Get into record mode and hit play on the reel-to-reel, -reel, and that should do it. good. This is going to be great fun. I mean, most of these songs I recorded uh, between the age of 17 and 20 years old, and uh, some of the songs I've forgotten completely what they are. I'm looking at the names on the boxes, but it doesn't make any sense to me. So this is kind of an adventure for me, and I'm glad you're joining me on the journey. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll have lots to listen to uh, in upcoming clips. Take care. What do you do?